Jar Jar Binks, Miz will freaking hate you. So, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, as in the poster says, every saga has a beginning. This is the first film in the Star Wars saga, and this is the fourth film to be released in the theaters, and is written and directed by George Lucas, and is the first film in the Star Wars prequel trilogy. So, the plot of The Phantom Menace, it takes place 32 years before Episode 4, A New Hope, which is chronologically the fourth film and the first film released in the saga theatrically. It begins as two Jedi attempt to resolve a trade dispute and eventual invasion of the planet Naboo by the Trade Federation. Unknown to the Jedi is that the situation is being manipulated by Chef Palpatine, the senator of Naboo and secretly a dark lord of the Sith called Darth Sidious. The Sith, the ancient enemies of the Jedi, Revealed themselves to the Jedi after a thousand years in hiding. And while the Jedi discover a young Tatooine slave named Anakin Skywalker, who is actually the chosen one who is destined to bring violence to the Force and who will grow up to become Darth Vader. Meanwhile, Queen Padme Amidala of Naboo fights to save her people from the invasion. Now, when this movie came out, I was. I was a little, I was just a little kid when this movie came out. I never heard of Star Wars. I never even seen this movie until 2013. And now down where I'm at, I've seen all the Star Wars movies. I'm not going to beat around the bush with this film. But, I like Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. But, this movie is a little underrated. A lot of people just hate this film. Now, the acting is kind of a mix of popcorn and candy for me and this is the reason why I think it's underrated. The acting is really good. Liam Neeson does a good job as Qui-Gon Jinn and his performance is very amazing in this film and it was cool seeing him before playing Brian Mills playing Jedi. Of course he dies at the end of this film. Spoilers. Who gives a care? Ewan McGregor was the perfect choice to play Obi-Wan Kenobi, and from my point of view, his performance is just in enjoyable. He is not as great as Alec Guinness, yeah, he yes, he is just as great as Alec Guinness in the original trilogy. <laughs> Natalie Portman plays Queen Amidala, and she's not as bad as the critics say. Her performance is amazing. I like, like her. She's awesome. Padme is freaking awesome. She's amazing. Was I surprised to see Samuel Jackson in this film? Yes. He plays Mace Windu, and a lot of people say he was completely miscast, but I thought he was a perfect choice. He doesn't have a lot of screen time, him or Yoda, or, but he does give a wonderful performance. You also get Frank Oz as Yoda, and he does the puppet version, but the CGI version is much more better. His performance is short, but it's really glad to see him again. You also got Anthony Daniels in C-3PO, and Kenny Baker is R2-D2, and I love how they showed to see showed how him and R2-D2 met. That's pretty cool, and he's very funny. The only performance I do kind of have an issue with is with Jake Lloyd. While I like the story about Anakin, I think Jake Lloyd's performance, he's alright, but his performance goes back and f forth. He does good on some occasions, but on some occasions, others, he just like, what? Now I have to get into some of my problems. The acting, most of the acting, most of the script is just poorly written. Um, the CGI out does outweigh the story, but 
some of it looks good and some of it looks pretty good, especially on the pod race. It's pretty action. I love all the action. The lightsaber duels are pretty good. John Williams' score is just incri incredible. My favorite music cue in this film is Duel of the Face. With the choir and the orchestra, it's a really good mix. It sounds really amazing. It's fantastic. The lightsaber duels are just really cool. With the use of CGI, they made them more powerful and intense. They're much more violent and they're much more stylized and choreographed. But, Jar Jar Binks has to be the most annoying character in the entire movie and in the entire freaking Star Wars universe. This was what I was afraid of about The Force Awakens. That we would get a character who just won't shut up. But, luckily we didn't. But, also, the movie does get a little bit boring, because they, all they do is talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot. But, for, star, because of all the good things I mentioned, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, will get a middle battle. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Episode 1. Do you like it? Do you hate it? And I'll see you guys for Episode 2.